Hello and welcome to the calorimetry screencast. I'm Mrs. Willie and let's get going. So let's start with what is calorimetry. Calorimetry is a lab technique used to measure the amount of transferred heat during a thermal equilibrium process. So if you remember back to our last lesson, we learned that heat is transferred through conduction, convection, and radiation. And we measure this transfer through temperature. And so it's difficult to measure the heat directly. We do not wanna to touch fire or we do not wanna to touch an extremely hot or cold object as it could burn us. So we use what is called a calorimeter, water, and a thermometer. We use liquid water because of its high specific heat and the easiness to measure the temperature of the water. Indirectly, we measure the heat of an object, mixtures, and or a chemical reaction. You're going to assume that the first law of thermodynamics holds true, which is that energy is not created or destroyed and only transferred between the system and the surroundings so the universe remains in balance. So a calorimeter is a device used to measure the heat transferred in a chemical or physical process. There's a coffee cup calorimeter, which is a constant pressure calorimeter, and you're looking at the temperature change. And then there is what we call a bomb calorimeter, which is a constant volume calorimeter. A substance is placed in the known quantity of water. So you know the mass of the water and you're gonna put in either a metal object, a solid compound or a liquid compound and then measure what happens to the water or you can complete a chemical reaction inside a calorimeter and see what happens to the change in temperature. In chemical reactions, both of the reactants are placed inside the calorimeter at the same time. Usually, balm calorimeters are used for reactions like combustion reactions where safety is an issue. We won't be doing any of those in the lab, so all of the reactions that we would be doing, we could safely use a coffee cup calorimeter. So calorimetry and endothermic reactions. So remember, in an endothermic change, the container feels cold. The system is absorbing, therefore it would have a positive Q value. And the surroundings would be releasing energy that's being absorbed by the system so the surroundings are a negative Q value. Thermal energy flows from the surroundings to the system until the thermal equilibrium is reached. So a cool object, piece of metal, was placed into hot water, which was the surroundings. The energy released from the hot water is absorbed into the cool object until both the water and the object are the same temperature. So as you can see, the energy flow from the liquid water has a larger arrow than the energy flow from the cool object until after time passes, the arrows become the same because the energy flow is the same because the temperature of the surroundings and the system are equal. And then let's look at an exothermic reaction. In exothermic changes, the container feels hot. So your system is releasing energy to your surroundings. The surroundings would have a positive Q value and your system would have a negative Q value. So the thermal energy flowed from the system to the surroundings until thermal equilibrium was reached. So a hot object was placed into the cool water. The energy released from the hot object is absorbed into the cool water until both the water and the object are the same temperature. So in this, the water is cooler, the object is hotter, so there's a greater flow of energy from the object to the water, 
and a smaller flow of energy from the water to the object until eventually thermal equilibrium is reached. So some temperature between the hot object and the cooler surrounding. So in this case, I'm gonna put cool water into our calorimeter and I'm also going to put in hot water and remember, hot always moves towards cold, so the energy change from the hot will be a greater arrow than the energy change from the cool until they make equilibrium, which would be they all have the same. Same thing happens if it was vice versa. So I have hot water, that is a larger amount being placed into cooler water, but still hot is moving towards cold. So the arrows still go where the greater energy transfer happens between the hot 